Hi, this is Tamara from MooglyBlog.com, and in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to make the 6 inch motif that makes up the modern rose afghan, which is a free pattern on MooglyBlog.com. For this video I'll be using Line Brand Yarns 24-7 Cotton, which is the same yarn used in the pattern itself, a Furls Odyssey hook, and Clover Locking Ring Stitch Markers, which are my favorite kind. Um, all of these are big faves. You can find links to all of them on my blog post that includes this video tutorial. So let's begin. Let me move these out of the way, and I'll move these to the side, but those will definitely come into play here in a few minutes. Now, to make this square, I'm going to start with my main color. And this is the same color in this pattern that I used for sort of the backdrop for all these squares. So, oops, I started just automatically with a slip knot, but that's not how you start this pattern. We're going to start with a magic circle, and if you haven't done that before, there is a link to that tutorial separately. So, but I'm going to go ahead and begin with my magic ring, or magic circle, and in that magic circle I'm going to make three, excuse me, six stitches with this main color. I'm going to start with a single crochet, then a half double crochet, and then four double crochets. At this point I can pull my finger out. There we are. And make four double crochets right into that ring. If you're not familiar with the magic circle, again, there's a separate video tutorial for that. Since I'm going to be walking you all the way through this square, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on the specific stitches that have tutorials out there already. All right, so I've got my six stitches here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Did I do that right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, okay. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and put a stitch marker right through that active loop, and I, I like to catch the end too. This keeps that loop from coming undone while I do other things, because now it's time to pull in the contrast color. Here I'm using the lilac. Now for this I do want to start with a slip knot, just the usual one right there on the hook, like so. Then I'm going to go back to this magic circle. You'll see I have not pulled it closed, because I'm going to work six more stitches in here. I'm going to go right into the ring and make a single crochet. This is joining with a single crochet or a standing single crochet right there. So I don't join and then chain one, I just join with a single crochet. Then it's from there, it's just as before, half double crochet and then four double crochets all right in that ring. One, two, three, and four, like so. And then I'll pull up that loop and put another stitch marker in it, like so. Now this is where I finally pull that magic ring closed. Take that short end and just pull it tight, and we've got our first round of the pattern. So at this point I go back to the main color. Take this stitch marker out, and I want to work two double crochets in each stitch of the contrast color. So I find that first single crochet right there. I work two, crumble, two double crochets right in there, two double crochets in the next one, and so on right across for a total of 12 double crochets made with the main color here. So I'll continue on around, and the nice thing is starting here with, officially I believe this is round two, you only work, up, up until close to the end, it'll change, but for now you only work main color stitches in the contrast color stitches, so right now I'm working with the main color, I'm only working into the contrast color, and when I work with the contrast color that will only be worked into main color stitches, just to help you keep track. So, coming up here on the last one, and since this one is open a little bit, it helps to hold on to the active loop a little bit so it doesn't get big and open here, just to hold, hold it still while you crochet into it. And I really love using stitch markers on this pattern. I know a lot of people say they can crochet without them, and you can, but believe me, 
It will help you keep track of the stitches for this so much easier. And why make it harder? It's supposed to be fun. So I pull out my loop, pull out my hook, put my stitch marker in there. It's time to go back to the contrast color. Now, eventually, as you're working with these yarns, they can get a little tangled. It's always a good idea as you move between colors just to take some time to untangle them a little bit. So now that that's done, I know my stitch stitches are secured because I've used my stitch markers. I'm going to go ahead and start this one. But before I do that, I want to go back and look at these. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Six stitches that I worked two double crochets into each. If I put a stitch marker in the first one of those stitches that I worked with the main color, then I'm going to know that I need to stop before I reach that point when I'm working with a contrast color. Let me show you what I mean. Let's do the contrast color part of round two. I'll pull that stitch marker out. Oops, put that in that way. There we are. Now for this, this is where later on we're going to work our 3D stitches. So all from here on out, all the contrast color stitches will have a chain one in between the double crochets or between the other stitches when we get later, right towards the end. But for now, we chain one double crochet in the first one. That's always a hard one to go into, isn't it? There we go. Then we chain one and double crochet in the next stitch. And just as before we were working into six stitches, this time we're gonna work into six stitches. And if you count the chains as a stitch, then again, we're working 12 stitches here. Remember, we just worked 12 stitches with our main color. So if you include the chains, we're now working 12 stitches with our contrast color. So chain one and double crochet in the first six main color stitches like so. And you can see when we do that, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. We end in the stitch right before that stitch marker. And that is just a great visual cue to let you know if you get distracted or you lose count, hey, I've gotten to where I need to stop with this. Have I finished my repeats? And in this case, we have. So we pull up our hook and insert our stitch marker, and it's time to go back to the main color. So we're beginning round three. This is the main color section, main color section, main color section, main color section, main color section. Whoops. All right. Almost lost my stitch anyway. Okay, so for this one, we're going to be working into the chain spaces, not the chains themselves, but into the chain spaces as well as into the stitches. So we work one double crochet in the chain space. And since that's our first stitch with the main color, I'll go ahead and put the stitch marker in there. Oops, doesn't want to close. Too much in my hands. There we go. All right. So one double crochet in the chain space followed by two double crochets in the next stitch. And we're going to do that six times. That's our repeat. Pull up a little bit more yarn here. With this yarn, I like to pull from the outside of the ball. I feel it just tangles a lot less and works out a lot better. So I've got one followed by two. So we go to one in the next chain space and two double crochets in the next stitch. And I know I'm moving quickly. I'm assuming if you're attempting a spiral, you already have a good handle on how to make double crochets. If I'm wrong, again, there's a separate video tutorial for that available on the channel. So remember, for this one, it's just one in the chain space and two in the stitch. And that gives us our increase. Oops, I can see here at the very end, I noticed I made a mistake. You can see we've got two contrast color stitches here without a chain space in between. Here's the great thing. I can pull this stitch up and high, nice and high, put a stitch marker in it so it doesn't come out, and I'm going to go ahead and fix my error. I'm just going to go right back to this contrast color before it's too late, pull out that last stitch chain one and work that last one right there. No harm, no foul. Love that about crochet. So much easier to go back and fix your mistakes than with so many other crafts, especially the ones that include glue. Oof. All right, here we are. 
we've got two double crochets in the stitch and then we've got our last repeat from before so we go one in the chain one space and two in that last stitch again holding on to the active loop of the contrast color sort of helps stabilize it so you can work into it a little easier here all right and believe it or not that's it for the first half of round three and we're ready to start with our contrast color again now this one's going to be in the way so i'm going to go ahead and take that one out because we're ready to work into that stitch and i'll take out the one holding open my contrast color here and this is where things start to get a little bit more complicated with the repeats when i originally wrote the pattern uh, I was working on this actually right up to the last minute and I typed it up the morning that it went live. So uh, full disclosure, there was an error in uh, this part of round three, but it has now been fixed. So what we're going to do is chain one, skip the next stitch, double crochet in the next stitch, and then we chain one and double crochet in the next stitch twice. So. And that's twice a repeat of the chain one, double crochet in the next stitch. So we chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next one, chain one, double crochet in the next one, then chain one, and double crochet in the next one after that. So that's our repeat for that one. The way I like to visualize it, just to keep track as I'm doing it, I skip one, and then double crochet in the next three. But that's, of course, with the chain one in between each of those. So let's do it again. We chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next, chain one, double crochet in the next, chain one, double crochet in the next. That's our second repeat. So for our third one, we chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next, chain one, double crochet in the next, chain one, oops, and now we're ready for more purple yarn right at the end of course that's how it always works right there we go all right and double crochet in the next and that's the end of our third repeat and just as a visual cue I know that we're in the right spot because that stitch marker is right there so we're ready to put our stitch marker in that one and head back over to the first color here we are the main color so we're ready to begin round let's see we've got one two three round four so for this one, I'm going to start with two double crochets in the chain space. And I'm going to pick up my stitch marker here and put a stitch marker in the first one of those two because that's the first one of the round. Pull up a little bit more of the ecru yarn. I would have used white like I did in the pattern, but I actually ran out. I used it all up making the blanket. So I had just a little bit left. There we are. All right, so we've got our two in the chain space, then I'm going to make one in the next stitch, and then one in the stitch after that, or excuse me, in the chain one space. So two in the chain space, one in the stitch, one in the chain space, then two in the next stitch, and then followed by one in the chain space, and one in the stitch after that. And that is a little bit long, but that is the first repeat for this round. Two, one, one, two, one, one. And the reason it takes all of that to do the repeat is because the first two is in a chain space and the second two is in a stitch. But those eight stitches total is your first repeat. So that's what we're gonna do again. We starting in a chain space, we double crochet two, then double crochet in the next stitch and in the next chain space. And I know I'm moving quickly. If, um, oops, got a little tangle here. If I'm moving a little too quickly for you in this, um, keep in mind this is an accompaniment to the written pattern, um, so it doesn't have to stand alone. You can definitely read along with the written pattern as you go. And of course, it's this video. You can rewind it as many times as needed. So. Time for two in the stitch, one in the space, and one in the next stitch. And that finishes our second repeat. So one more of those repeats and I'll be done with the first half of round four. 
So two in the first chain space. Pull up a little more yarn. Always the problem in long patterns like this, long demos. I always have to stop to pull up more yarn. If you pull out too much ahead of time, as I'm sure you know, it all gets tangled. So we've got two, one, one, two, one, one. And that's really the easiest way to remember this. If you think of the chain space and the stitches as sort of the same, it's just two, one, one, two, one, one, two, one, one. I think we all have those mental shortcuts when we're crocheting and keeping track of a pattern. So there we have it. That is the first half of round four. You can see we're really getting that neat spiral effect with our stitches. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a stitch marker in that. And then we'll finish round four here with our contrast color. Go ahead and pull up a bit of yarn while we're at a stopping point. I really love this yarn. I've had a lot of questions about it um, because it is cotton and it doesn't look like what most people think of when they think of cotton yarn. We all think of the sort of the kitchen cotton types. Uh, this one's mercerized which means it's been treated with chemicals, um, safe chemicals, don't worry about that. That I think people hear the word chemicals and freak out a little bit, but it's been treated and processed a little bit. It's still 100% cotton, but it gives us this really nice sheen and uh, keeps it from fuzzing up, uh, like I think we tend to think of with a lot of cotton. So it's just a really nice cotton yarn to work with, lighter for summer, but without having that heavy kitchen cotton feel that you can get. So let me pull this one up out of the way here and we'll begin the second half of round four. So what we're gonna do with this one is we're gonna chain one. Remember, we always have that chain one in between. Double crochet in the next stitch. Then chain one, skip the next stitch, and double crochet in the stitch after that. And that right there is our repeat for this one. So this is our repeat. We chain one, double crochet in the next stitch, chain one, skip the next stitch, double crochet in the stitch after that. And in my own head, I think of these as little arches. You can see our repeat start right here. We've got an arch and an arch. Those are two repeats. So for this row, there are six total. So we'll have six little arches. Remember, there's always that chain space in between though. So we are almost all the way around here. Well, halfway through. Now a little more than half. Chain one, double crochet in the next stitch. Chain one, skip one, double crochet in the stitch after that. Chain one, double crochet in the next stitch. Chain one, skip one, double crochet in the stitch after that. And that is the end of round four. And we are ready for round five, which is where things do tend to get the most complicated. So I'll try and take that one a little bit slower here in just a second. All right, so let's begin round five. Now I'm going to go back to the main color here. I've pulled up some more yarn, but of course it wants to tangle. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and take that stitch marker out and let's begin. Now, for this one, remember we had two and then one, one, two, one, one, two, one, one. We're gonna start this one with two and then three singles. So let me show you what I mean here. It makes sense in my head, but it doesn't always make sense when I say it, which is I guess why there's a formal way of writing patterns. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my stitch marker in the first one of the two to mark the beginning of this round. And then I'm going to do one in the next stitch, one in the next chain space, and one in the next stitch. That's our first part of our row five or round five is two in the chain space, then three singles. So we do that three times. So let's start the second one. Two in the chain space. Remember, we're still just making double crochets. Then three all alone. One in the stitch, one in the next chain space, and one in the next stitch like so, okay? So one more of those, two in the next chain space, one in the next stitch, one in the next chain space, and one in the next stitch. Okay, so that is our two, three, two, three, two, three, our three repeats that begin row five. 
once again, my earring wants to tingle up on me. There we go. Okay, so this is the slightly tricky part of row five. I'm gonna make two, I'm gonna start just as before, two in the chain space. followed by one in the next stitch and one in the chain space after that. And then we start shrinking our stitches. I'm gonna do a half double crochet in the next stitch, two half double crochets in the next chain space, one, two, half double crochet in the next stitch and then after that I'm going to single crochet in the chain space single crochet in the next stitch two single crochets in the next chain space one two and then you can see we've got a stitch a chain space and a stitch here I'm going to slip stitch into each of these but I'm gonna make sure to do it loosely. Now I did a video tutorial or a little tip about this before. I know I'm going to have to work into these slip stitches later, so I'm gonna make sure to pull up the loop, make sure it's the same size loop as the other loop on the hook before I pull it through. And that'll just make it a little bit easier to work into. So second one in the chain space and third one right in the top of that last stitch of the contrast color. Then I'm going to very gently, let me get some more yarn so I can do it, very gently pull up that loop because I don't want to close up that slip stitch at all. I want it to stay nice and open. And then we're ready for the contrast color. That wasn't too bad. This one gets a little crazier. Let me get this one out of the way. Like so. And we'll begin the second half of round five. So I'm going to start with a chain one, as always double crochet in the next stitch, chain one, skip the next stitch, double crochet in the stitch after that, and then chain one, skip the next stitch, double crochet in the stitch after that, chain one, and then double crochet in the stitch immediately after that. Then, and that was the first section between the brackets if you're following along on the written pattern. So from there, I'm going to chain one, skip the next stitch, double crochet in the stitch after that. Then I'm going to go back and repeat the brackets. I'm going to chain one, double crochet in the next stitch, chain one, skip one, double crochet in the stitch after that, chain one, skip one, double crochet in the stitch after that, oops, ran out of yarn halfway through my stitch here, pull up some more of the lilac, so finish that double crochet, and unfortunately that means I've lost my place. Now this is why I said to be so careful with this row, but you can always go back and check your work, and believe you me, I made 36, actually I've made 38 of these squares now, and I still have to read through this one as I do it. So let's go back over our work a little bit and see where we're at. We chain one, double crochet in the next stitch, chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next stitch, chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next, chain one, and double crochet in the next, and that's our first bracket. Chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next, then we go back to our bracket. Chain one, double crochet in the next, chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next, chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next, then it's time to chain one and double crochet in the next, and that'll be our second pass through those bracketed instructions. So from here, we chain one, skip one, and half double crochet in the next stitch, like so, all right, then we chain one, half double crochet in the next stitch, don't skip one there, like so, chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next stitch, chain one, skip one, two single crochets in the next stitch, one and two, 
And then from here, we've got three stitches left. We're going to do slip stitches just as before. Again, we're going to be working into these later, so we want to pull them up nice and high before we finish the slip stitch. And rather than actually slip stitching in this one, I'm going to go ahead and give you a little tip here. I prefer to cut the yarn, because we're going to cut the yarn after that last slip stitch, but cut the yarn a stitch early, leaving a good six to eight inches to work with. I'm going to go ahead and pull that on through the second to last stitch there. And using, oh, my yarn, my, my hook wants to roll away on my table here. I'm going to use my yarn needle, and I'm going to sew in that last stitch. So rather than making a slip stitch here, I'm going to go under both loops of that third stitch. I'm going to keep it real loose, because again, I need to crochet into this later, and then go back through the center. Let me get it towards the camera here. Right through, and then right under that next stitch right there. I'm going to pull it through again, not too tight. I want to make sure I can get my hook in there later. But from there, I can weave in the ends. And it's just a little bit nighter, nicer and neater than doing a finishing off with a uh, with a slip stitch and then a knot. This way there's no knot. And I'm just going to leave that tail for now, and I'll weave it in at the end when I've got a little more substance here to work into. So that is the end of our contrast color. So from here on out, we're only going to be working with the main color. So that makes it a little bit easier. And we're also done working in spirals. From here on out, we're actually going to be squaring up our circle so that it becomes a six inch motif. So unlike before when we didn't have to chain because we were working in a spiral, it's time to chain. Now, what I want to do is I want to start the next round in this chain space because we don't want to start here as that was the last stitch of the previous round. We want to come over here. So I'm going to slip stitch right into that chain space. And here you need to make a decision. If you like the chainless starting double crochet, which I do have a separate tutorial for, you can do that here. Uh, that's what I do when I make my squares. Or you can chain three instead and count that as your first double crochet, whichever you prefer. I'm going to make a chainless starting double crochet right in that chain space. And that will count as my first double crochet. Again, if you prefer, you can do a chain three. Then I'm going to chain two and double crochet again right in that chain space. So if you prefer chains, it would actually be a chain five, three for the double crochet, and then two for the chain two, or chainless starting double crochet, chain two, double crochet. We've made our first corner. From there, we're going to double crochet in the next stitch, double crochet in the chain space after that. Then, Pull up some more yarn, as you do. There we are. We're going to work a half double crochet in the next stitch, half double crochet in the stitch after that, or excuse me, the chain space, half double crochet in the, taf the stitch after that. At this point, we're really, again, we're really treating the chain spaces as if they were stitches. So we work a corner, two double crochets, three half double crochets, we're going to follow that with four single crochets. So one in the chain space, one in the stitch, oops, one in the chain space, one in the stitch, and then we're back to half double crochets. We want to do three of those again. One in the chain space, one in the stitch, one in the chain space, and then two double crochets. One in the stitch, and one in the chain space. And that, including the corner, the first corner there is our first side. So it's time to make another corner. This time we're going to be starting in a chain. Remember the first corner is in a chain space, so you want your second corner to be in a stitch. So that's a double crochet, chain two, and double crochet, like so, right there, okay? Pull up some more yarn wants to wiggle away from me on the table here. There we go. Now, just as before, we're going to do two double crochets. This time the first one's going to be in the chain space, then a stitch, followed by three half double crochets. I'm going to show you something neat about the stitch markers here in a minute, so keep in mind we've still got one stitch marker in there. So a half double crochet in the chain space, a half double crochet in the stitch, and a half double crochet in the chain space after that. And we've got our four single crochets, one in the stitch, one in the chain space, 
one in the stitch. And this can get tricky. Remember to reference your previous row if you're having trouble distinguishing your stitches at this point. Next in the chain space, that's our four single crochets. <clears throat> Excuse me. And now uh, this gets really easy to tell if you're on track because we've got our pair of single crochets there worked into one stitch. So I know when the first one of those is where I need to start my half double crochets. So I put the first half double crochet in there the second half double crochet in the next single crochet. The third half double crochet goes into the first of those slip stitches, like so. And then the two double crochets go in those last two slip stitches. So one, and because I made those nice and big, they're very easy to get my hook into, and two. And that's the end of our second, sti second side, beginning with our second corner. Now, this is the cool thing about having this stitch marker here left over from when we began that last round. I know that this last slip stitch was actually worked into this stitch. It would be really easy for me to just keep crocheting and make that first corner in that stitch, but that's not what I want to do because this last slip stitch is worked into this stitch. So I know when I get to this point, I want to work my first, my third corner of this round into the marked stitch. And that having that stitch marker there will really save you a lot of headaches. It's just a little visual reminder. It might look like you're skipping a stitch, but you're really not because that last slip stitch is worked into that stitch right there. So remember our corner is a double crochet, chain two, double crochet. And from there, again, we just work the same thing. Two double crochets, three half double crochets, four single crochets, three half double crochets, two double crochets, and a corner all the way around. And we'll end up doing the same thing over here where you know when you get down to those two single crochets by themselves, right before the slip stitches, you know you've got your half double crochets and your last two double crochets will be in those last two uh, slip stitches. And from there, you join to either the chain three or the top of the chainless starting half double crochet and then you chain one and work single crochet all the way around. I won't make you sit through all of that. That's obviously the longest part. But here we have a finished one where I've gone ahead and woven in all the ends. And you can see there's a round of single crochet. With the round of single crochet, it's just a single crochet in each stitch, which with three single crochets in each chain two space for the final round. It isn't a perfectly square square, but that's okay. You can block it out or you don't have to. When I put the blanket together, I didn't block it out at all. I just sewed them to each other and it worked out beautifully. Um, you can see if you did block it out, it might square out that spiral a little bit in the middle and that's okay too. In fact, a lot of people I think really like the look of this spiral just the way it is without the 3D portion that you'll see, um, that you do see in the blanket that we showed at the beginning of the video and that of course you can get the pattern for in the blog. Um, just having this mesh here is a really attractive look all on its own. But at this point is where if you want to, you can add the really fun 3D spiral. And this is where we bring back in the contrast color. I'm going to pull up a whole bunch of yarn here, and I won't make you watch me do the whole spiral. I think I can do the beginning, and you will definitely get the hang of it. It is very simple, although it is difficult to describe in words, so I'm excited to get to show it to you. I'm going to start with a slip knot on my hook. Just as before, when we brought in the contrast color, I'm going to join with a single crochet. Now, I marked it out on the pattern, but we want to look for the last double crochet that was made in round one. Remember round one, there were no chain ones in between. So it's that one right there. It should be relatively easy to find. There's no big space. It's that one right there. I'm going to go around it as if I was going to make a post stitch, a front post stitch, like so. I'm going to pull up a loop and make a single crochet. So I'm joining with a single crochet as if it was a post stitch. And you'll notice I've picked up the square and sort of folded it here. It just makes it easier to keep working around that stitch. So I've got a single crochet. I'm going to follow that with a half double crochet right around that post and a double crochet like so. And there you go. And that's how we join that. Now this little end sticking up here Obviously, when I go to weave in the ends, I would weave it in so that it gets pulled to the back. So I'll just go ahead and do that with my hook now so it doesn't get in the way, like so. Okay, you'll also notice that I started at the top of the stitch and worked my way down. 
And that's what I'm going to do for each of these stitches, uh, each of these parts of the 3D flower. I'm going to go to the next double crochet here in the spiral. I'm going to start at the top of the post and I'm going to work three double crochets right around the post as if they were post stitches. Whoops, you dropped the whole hook. That's not how you do it. One, two, and three. Okay, like so. Three post stitches right around the hook. They don't look like your typical post stitches because they don't lay flat. Um, because there's three of them, they actually stand up. And that's how you create the 3D look. Let's do that again. I'm going to yarn over, find my next double crochet in the spiral here. Start right at the top, and it helps sometimes just to give a really, get a really firm hold on the bottom of that stitch. Kind of got to engage both hands to make this part. And I'm going to make three double crochets again. And that's what I'm going to continue to do. I'm going to make three double crochets around, I believe it's 37 of these stitches total. So I'm going to keep going to the next one, starting at the top, and making three double crochets around each one until I get right about to the end, like so. Okay, and you can see, if I pull the hook out of the way here, you can actually see we're starting to get that 3D popped up look of our flower. Now when I do weave in this end, I'm going to make sure to pull it down tight so that this end of the spiral kind of just fades right into the center here, and then I'm going to continue to work my way out. Now, when I get to the end here, I know I want to end on the first of the two single crochets that are together. So this is the stitch right here, which is actually, it looks like the first half double crochet. That one gets three double crochets worked around it, just as around all the others. We just work our way on out with the yarn. Three half double crochets right there or excuse me, three double crochets right there. On the stitch after that, two double crochets only. So on that second half double crochet, you only work two double crochets around it. The one after that, you work two half double crochets. And then you finish with a single crochet around the first of the pair. So when you get to that point, you're going to go, and this one's a little tricky, you kind of have to just use brute force come up right under the white part here. You can see that's right in between the two stitches, like so, and then you should be able to pull your yarn back around through and make a single crochet, like so. So you pull that single crochet through, finish your stitch, cut your yarn, and weave in your end down here on the back side, of course. So that is how you make the Modern Rose Afghan, the six inch square that is the basis for the whole thing. Um, be sure to check out the tutorial on mooglyblog.com. Uh, for links to everything. I've got links to the hook, the pattern, of course, the stitch markers, the yarn, and you can get all the different sizes you might want to make this blanket in. I've got it listed uh, with baby, twin, king, um, queen, full, basically all the main sizes. Um, and of course you can make any custom size. It's a six inch square approximately. Uh, so any, just figure out how wide you want it to be and how many six inch squares that'll be and go from there. A skein or two rather, two skeins of Lion Brand Yarns 24-7 cotton will make eight squares. So that will help you figure out the math on how much yarn to buy too. Um, that will actually leave you a little bit left over that will help you sew them together. Uh, to sew them together, I used the mattress stitch, which again has a separate tutorial on mooglyblog.com, which will be linked in the tutorial for this one. So be sure to check that out if you need that help too. So that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this video as long as it may be. I hope you've enjoyed crocheting along with me. If you have, give us a like, subscribe to our channel, and I want to thank you so much for sticking with me and watching.